Good morning. Good morning. It's close to time. Probably by the time everybody gets on, it'll be seven o'clock. And uh, here we are. I feel like I'm tilted. I might need to hold it like this. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Here we are. 6.59, look at us being all early birds. Good morning. All right. Good morning, Rob. Maybe I should put my glass. I might need my glasses more this morning than I normally do. All right, good morning, Rob. Yes, good morning, Susanna. Maybe I need a longer arm today. I just need it a little bit higher. Maybe I'll put my puzzle down underneath it. These are things I don't know until until I just start. There we go. That's better. I'll just stick my water up behind there. There. All right. Good morning, Elizabeth. We're glad that you're here this morning. Yes. All right. Well, here we are. Good morning, Ellen. Bright and early and the sun is coming out a little bit earlier every day, which always makes me happier, <laughs> happier. And so I hope you guys had a great weekend. I know mine was very, very full. Good morning, Beth. And um, the thing uh, that I eventually came around to discussing this morning, you're talking about Good Morning Paul, is uh, I was watching uh, a Lenten service yesterday uh, by Mike Jensen. Jansen. There's a Z. Jansen. Um, and the thing that stood out to me is he was talking about Lent and he was saying how God is is big enough to hold everything. Good morning, Tanya. and Good morning, Gary. And I love that image that God is big enough to hold everything. Can we like big enough, big enough. He's big enough. He's big enough to hold everything. And, uh, and that really struck with me. Like overall the service was good, but sometimes we can get overwhelmed, right? By we think we should just absorb everything from everything that we hear. Um, but that was the one thing that stood out to me. Uh, good morning, Alicia, was that God is big enough to hold everything. Can we say everything together? Everything. Like he's, he's big enough and nothing, um, when we are real with God, that doesn't offend him. And I think sometimes we want to sanitize our prayers uh, because we're afraid of being unholy or unrighteous or offensive to God. But there's, but God is actually big enough to hold everything that we need to say because he realizes that, that we're human and there's hurts in this world and there's pain and, and we have to work it out somehow. We have to deal with it, right? There's always that emotional response to the things that we're experiencing. And so often we just want to push down the, the emotional response and ignore it, uh, probably because we don't think it's important. And yet God has wired us to have emotional responses to things. Uh, when something good happens, we're like, yeah, right? We want to experience. Um, but often when we are, are hurt or we're upset about something, we actually pack away the anger and the hurt and the frustration rather than taking it out and, and examining it. And so part of, uh, of what uh, Mike was saying was the importance of, of lament. And, um, and lament is basically being real with God, expressing to God what is going on in our lives. And, and uh, one author said it's complaining to God. I'm like, oh, I gave up complaining for Lent. I'm not supposed to be complaining. Why are we complaining to God? And then as I got working through it, um, it's about being real. It's about saying, God, I don't understand what's going on. God, uh, like, where are you? How long is this going to, how come I can't hear you? And the thing is, those things actually need to be expressed to God rather than sometimes we just vent to other people. And I think that's what the problem was with the Israelites, right? 
<laughs> they just vented to everyone around them, and that then that corrupted their thoughts and minds towards God, and then that corrupted their thoughts and minds. And so I think it's important when we have stuff on our heart that we're careful with where we address, to whom we address that. And I believe that we need to address all of our complaints to God because he really is big enough to handle it. And he's big enough to actually sort through to it, sort through it. Um, Psalm 32 uh, says, therefore let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. For uh, when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble and you surround me with songs of deliverance. Like it's, it's this wonderful passage where it says, therefore let everyone who's godly pray to you while you may be found. Like God wants us to talk to him about everything, about everything that's going on in our hearts. The good, the bad, the ugly, the awful, the, oh, I really don't want to talk about that, right? The dirty stuff that's in there, the thoughts that go through our minds. But he wants us to talk about it with him because he's the only one that can really help. Can you say that? He is the only one that can really help. He is the only one that can really help. Like he's big enough, right? He's big enough to hold our tears. He's big enough to hold our hurts. He's big enough to hold our frustrations. And then he actually sorts through them. He says, can we talk about this? Can we talk about this? Can we talk about this, right? Because it says, you know, draw near to God and he will draw near to us. That's James 4. And then Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will tell you great and unsearchable things you did not know, but we actually have to call out to God. We have to be real with God. Um, most of you know, I have no problem like expressing what's going on because I've learned to do that. I've learned to be, to real, to say, this is what I'm struggling with. Because when we're real about what's going on, then that creates a place for the Lord to come and actually deal with it. But we need to be we need to be willing to let God deal with that, to be to be real with God because he really is big enough. And he's not going to be offended. He's not going to be offended. I was talking uh, with a, a young friend of mine yesterday, and I said to her, it doesn't matter what you're going to say to me. All right? Just you tell me what you need to say. Because she just needed someone to talk to. And that's God, Right? Like, God is so much better at it than I am. But he's not going to be offended by what you need to say, what you need to get off of your heart, what you need to work through. What's interesting about Psalm 32 is the the first part, the five and the six. I only quoted the seven, eight, and nine, I think. But it said, um, Psalm 32, five says, When I acknowledged my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity, I said I would confess my sin to the Lord, and he forgave the iniquity or the bentness of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you. Right? And so sometimes when we're honest with the Lord, he actually then says, well, can we work on this attitude because it's not right? Um, you know when you sinned here? You know when you told that lie? Or you know when you were being selfish or jealous here? Can we... Can we work on that? Because he loves us, because he loves us, because he loves us, because he loves us. He does it so gently, right? When we're honest with God, he doesn't come down with a hammer and say, that's stupid, that's an awful way of thinking, I can't believe you're... No, in his gentleness, he says, can we work on this together? Thank you for telling me. Can we work on this? And then it really is this ping pong game back and forth. We, we express ourselves to God. He comes in his gentleness and he says, okay, can we deal with this? And then we actually have to make a choice to say, yes, I acknowledge my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity. I said I would confess my sin to the Lord and he forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who's godly pray to him. <sighs> right? It's, it's, prayer is this conversation back and forth. God is big enough to hold whatever we have to give him, but we have to be willing to give it to him, to be real with him. And then when he speaks back to us, then that's where we have to pick it up again and say, okay, am I willing to deal with that? Am I willing to go to that person and apologize? Am I willing to actually change the way I think? Am I willing to change the way I, I want 
things? Am I willing to do what God is asking me to do? Because God is big enough. God is big enough and has, you know, called to me and I will answer and I will tell you great and unsearchable things. Like he has these unsearchable things that he wants to tell us, but he actually waits for us for this conversation, right? And so if you've ever said, I can't talk to God about that, then I want you to start talking to God about it. And uh, in my prayer yesterday, I, it often goes like this when I'm talking to mixed crowds of people who believe and who don't believe. It's something like this, God, I say, for those of you who believe in God, you just start talking to God. And for those of you who don't believe in God, you just start talking to God too, <laughs> right? Because it doesn't matter about what we believe, it doesn't change who God is. Right, so you might be believing that God can't handle whatever it is you have to, get, but that's a lie from the enemy. He can handle whatever it is that you want to talk to him about because he can and he wants to and he loves you. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you, and he has so much more for you than you can ever imagine or hope for. So I don't know what it is that you might be needing to talk to God to about how, how great it is, but I just want you to know that God is so much bigger and that God loves you. God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. Oh yes, so very much. So be honest with God today. Uh, make space for him so he can speak into your heart and then have a heart to respond. So that's it. Enjoy the day. God is big enough to handle whatever it is that you need to tell him. And then he loves you enough to respond. All right, so let me pray for you. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for everyone who watched, is watching, will watch. And Lord, would you help us to share with you what's on our heart, whether we believe in you or not, and then trust that you'll speak to us because you love us, you love us, you love us, you love us, you love us so very much. You don't want anything separating us, including a conversation that's tough. And so God, would you help us to make space for you today to hear your voice, and then would you give us the courage to respond to what it is that you're saying. So Lord, watch over us and keep us safe. Bring to us the people you would have us to interact with today. Keep away all distractions and protect us from the evil one. Help us to be your light and life, joy and truth to everyone we meet. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, dear friends, we will talk to you later. Bye.